Good evening, I'm Spot On Weather Meteorologist Matthew Euler, and today we're going to take a look at the July climatology for southeastern Virginia. Main focus here will be on the Hampton Road cities. Hampton Road cities for the climatology for July. Since we're moving into a brand new month, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening for July, typically. All right, for the synoptic weather pattern, what we typically have is we have a Bermuda high pressure system, a strong subtropical high, which reaches its northernmost point in the Atlantic Ocean. And the clockwise flow around this high pressure system generally gives us more of a southerly, southwesterly wind flow into southeast Virginia. So the high is very expansive this time of year. And this red line down here in the equatorial regions, that represents the area where air rises and converges. And along this, ITCZ or intertropical convergence zone that is an area where tropical systems tend to form and develop and this Bermuda high with this clockwise flow tends to steer those systems in the tropical easterlies westward and uh, also northwestward off the east coast. So in July what we typically have is again the Bermuda high expands northward across the Atlantic Ocean here influences the weather across southeastern Virginia with that warm and moist south-southwesterly winds on its backside. And when you get that south-southwest wind persistently in the month of July, that tends to lead to more of the warm, moist, uh, muggy, uh, really humid conditions that's very typical of what you see this time of year, kind of like what you're feeling today on July the 2nd. All right, and then tropical systems, yes, they can impact the area. And on average, we have one hurricane which impacts Southeast Virginia, basically one every 2.3 years. Frontal systems are nearly non-existent and very weak as the main jet stream resides over the Northern United States along the US Canadian border. So there's really no push from the upper level jet stream winds of any frontal systems to push through the area. Looking at the hurricane threat, typical tracks and origins for July, Yellow areas indicate where these systems generally tend to develop in the yellow. All right, so we do have some generation possible developmental areas in the Gulf of Mexico into the Caribbean as well as the Western Atlantic Ocean. So here are the tracks indicated by the arrows. Anything that forms in the Caribbean typically will move into the Western Atlantic and it could have an impact on Southeast Virginia. The systems that form further south, south of Hispaniola, south of Puerto Rico, they tend to go generally westerly and then west and then northwesterly, turning into the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so now I want to go more specifically into southeast Virginia, the Hampton Road cities, the averages for the month of July. And I do want to do a shout out to WeatherSpark. WeatherSpark is a great website. Just take a just Google it and you'll find WeatherSpark, all the data you want for any city in the world. They break down great um, average numbers. If you're on a business trip or traveling somewhere, it's a great site to do. All right, so looking at Southeast Virginia for the average temperatures in July, there is not much of a change. The red lines here indicate the average high temperatures throughout the month, ranging from July 1st to average high of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, up to an average high of 87 between the week of July 11th to July 19th. And then again, it's remaining average high of 87 all the way out to the end of the month on July 31st. Average low temperatures are denoted by this blue line. And you'll notice the average lows range from 71 degrees Fahrenheit up to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's not much of a temperature spread between the mornings and the afternoons. And that's mainly due to the fact that we have a lot of humidity in the air. With humid air, the air mass just simply does not the temperature spread is not as great. The air mass, the temperatures cannot cool down much very significantly after the sun goes down. All right, looking at the total daylight hours, all right, we, we already hit the summer solstice on June 21st. Starting off on July 1st, we have 14 hours and 38 minutes of daylight. And as the month progresses, we slowly see the daylight hours decrease down to 14 hours and two minutes. So we lose about 36 minutes 36 minutes of daylight between the beginning and the end of the month, which really isn't very significant. The major decline will start happening in August and especially September towards the autumnal or fall equinox. So plenty of light out there for your outdoor plans in the month of July. 
the overall incident shortwave solar radiation starts at 6.7 kilowatt hours on July 1st and that slowly declines throughout the month by the end of the month down to 6.1 kilowatt hours and all the incident shortwave solar radiation is referring to is how bright the sun is how much of the energy that shortwave solar radiation reaches the earth's surface in our particular latitude here in southeast virginia um, so very high at 6.7 kilowatts again decreasing throughout the month down to 6.1 looking at the average humidity for the month of july yes we i like to refer to the atlantic ocean as a giant bathtub you think about a giant bathtub in your house filled with 78 to 80 degree water close the door don't turn the fan on in the bathroom and you will know how your mirror will fog up with humidity and moisture that moisture will condense on your mirror when you're sitting right next to a large uh, water body at 78 to 80 degrees you are going to have very high humidity values for the month uh, again, WeatherSpark breaks it down nicely, the categories at the bottom here. Um, they break it down into, we're, we're mainly, the, most of the time, 68 to 78, up to 84% average relative humidity, 85% relative humidity here. Um, just very, very muggy overall in the month of July, and that's really not going to change a whole lot. The average cloud coverage, ranging from July 1st all the way through July 31st, uh, we have 44% to 47% cloud coverage, typically a partly cloudy situation across the skies of Southeast Virginia for the month of July. Um, really not much change there. Precipitation probability, all right, this is your, your chances of precip on various days throughout the month. Beginning of the month, you're looking at about a 38% chance of some type of precipitation, and then that increases slowly throughout the month to a 44% chance of precipitation by the end of the month and the range 38 to 44 percent that takes place mainly in the form of scattered afternoon and early evening thunderstorms the heating of the day in combination with warm moist and humid maritime tropical air mass now average rainfall throughout the month uh, generally ranges from if we were to take any of these days right uh, any of these days we generally look at a range of 3.4 to 4.3 inches for the month of July. That's our average precipitation. A lot of that precipitation again comes in the form of scattered thunderstorms. Now when these thunderstorms are fairly heavy, we can get a very large amount of precipitation on short order where you may have a thunderstorm uh, producing localized flash flooding or a low-lying flooding of flood prone areas uh, in excess of one inch in one thunderstorm. If you get a really good downburst over the area in your specific city in southeast virginia the average wind speed very weak synoptic pressure gradient continues in july um, outside of any strong thunderstorm downdrafts or land land falling hurricanes the winds range from five generally from 4.9 to 5 miles per hour not much change over the month of july again the pressure gradient is very weak the polar front jet streams along the U.S. Canadian border. We just don't have the same type of storm dynamics that we get in the winter time here in Southeast Virginia. And then the average water temperatures. All right, the water temperatures. Notice this time of year, late July and early August. That's typically when our water temperatures reach their peak for the year. Notice the average water temperature of 75 degrees on July 1st rising all the way up to 78 degrees by the end of the month, July 31st. So the water temperatures, not much of a change over the course of the month. You do need to realize one thing, that water tends to not heat up as quickly as a landmass. A landmass is heated much more rapidly. Water is much denser uh, substance, so it takes a lot longer to warm it. All right, that wraps up the July climatology for Southeast Virginia. All right, and again, just as a reminder, you can check us out, Spot on Weather, Facebook, search my name, Matthew P. Euler. Spot on Weather is also on Twitter. We also have um, Spot on Weather on Facebook, which is this, you search my name, you'll get that. Spot on Weather on the YouTube channel, right here on the YouTube channel. And then the Weebly website, again, Spot on Weather, there's the website. And then, sh again, sh you're welcome to share your weather photos or send weather questions to us at weatherspoton at gmail.com. That's our email address. Um, overall, 
that wraps things up for the July climatology. I hope everyone has a great 4th of July. Take care and remember, we're spot on weather. If we're not spot on, we're not doing it right. Have a great evening, everyone.